the significance of this trial, um, in, in my mind, um, really um, comes down to two different things. Number one is the amount of time that we spent on this trial. There were a period of about seven weeks prior to trial, and this is having done everything else, be, uh, uh, investigation of through preliminary hearing and motions, where we worked every day. I remember um, working on the 4th of July, um, sitting up in our conference room upstairs watching the um, stampede parade go down 10th Avenue while working on Mr. Sandoval's case. Um, we worked every day for seven weeks getting ready for trial. Um, to the detriment of family, to friends, of, of other co-workers, because this is all we were working on. The, the other aspect of the significance of this case, I think, really focuses on what I think is the uniqueness of the case. And, and my understanding from um, symposiums and meetings that I've attended and talking with other people who have done these cases, this had never been done before. Um, and when I say this, what I'm referring to is a case in which a victim's body was never uh, recovered, that there was no um, specific known murder weapon, uh, there was no crime scene, and there were no admissions or, or confessions by a defendant. All of those things, I think, combined really make this particular case, um, if not completely unique, um, certainly um, um, ex an extraordinary case in, in Weld County. Mm. I think the first milestone was, was actually getting the arrest warrant secured, um, meeting with Judge Gutierrez, leaving him with the affidavit for, you know, I think it was over the lunch hour, um, which is uncommon, um, allowing him the opportunity to read over uh, at his leisure and take in all of the facts that were presented within the affidavit and then actually getting the arrest warrant. Um, you know, honestly, I think the second milestone for me, uh, I know Brad and Keith w enjoyed being able to make the arrest, um, but to be able to go out to Vegas um, and to dig uh, and, and to establish enough probable cause for a search warrant into, uh, into uh, uh, Sandoval's home uh, was uh, uh, probably the biggest milestone for me because of uh, the fact of proving uh, to an outside agency, to an outside judge, uh, that the circumstantial evidence was so important to a case of that age that it convinced the judge uh, and then what we got out of the home as a result of the search warrant and the items of evidence that um, I would then evaluate and dig through um, that furthered the case made it that much stronger. Um, and so some of the items that came out of the search warrant uh, that were important, uh, much ado was made over the photographs, uh, the kind of a shrine that Sandoval had, had created inside of his home, pictures of Tina uh, on either side of his bed. Um, obviously officers had already seen that when they uh, made the initial arrest of Sandoval. Uh, photographs were taken of it, um, but subsequent to a search warrant actually securing those photos. Uh, for introduction during trial w was big. Um, for me, though, there were the um, other items that we found on his computer <coughs> where he had filed uh, as a widower uh, on one of his taxes, um, basically documenting the layout of the house in relation to what some of his friends would relate to me about where Tina was, uh, Sandoval's allegations that she was alive, and that they had chance encounters. Um, those types of statements were, were huge when given uh, the other evidence that we knew that Tina had essentially disappeared and was, was uh, dead. Um, and then the stalking videos that he had uh, showing his depraved actions uh, the entire time he was free um, just kind of f furthered uh, the total evidence that we had against uh, Sandoval when it came to trial. Yeah, again, it's a theory, uh, but it's based on uh, the totality of the evidence obtained, the computers that were uh, 
taken from Sandoval's home during the search. <clears throat> I uh, secured more search warrants to get into the computers. Uh, the vast majority, my own percentage here, but probably 95 to 98 percent of his internet history downloaded from this computer over uh, roughly a 10 year period was uh, uh, hardcore porn. That was the totality of the use of this computer. Um, but I found that 5 to 3 percent of activity on the, on the computer entailed uh, something that I discovered in 2008, November of 2008, in which he began to Google <coughs> and research a uh, facility that CSU had c constructed or built uh, in the Pawnee Grasslands just off Highway 85. Um, I compared this unique search activity that he was doing uh, with other data from his uh, computer confirming with travel receipts and, and reservations that uh, Sandoval had made a trip back to Greeley over Thanksgiving uh, in 2008. Um, and within minutes, it would appear, upon his arrival back home in Las Vegas, he was Googling this remote, odd site um, in the Pawnee Grasslands that CSU uh, had recently begun to turn earth and, and construct a building. Uh, and so his, his curiosity for something so remote was so odd uh, that clearly there was uh, an underlying reason behind him uh, researching this. Um, and so I made my trips out there. <coughs> um, there had not been construction in this vast open area since the 60s. Um, CSU had begun to build out there, and it's my suspicion that Sandoval drove past the dump site looked off in the distance, saw the construction in the turned earth, was curious what was going on, waited till he got home and immediately got on his computer. And rather than do what he almost exclusively does on the internet, he's Googling this remote site, which is only an indicator to me that uh, Tina's probably buried somewhere in that general area. Well, I have confidence that this isn't going to get overturned. If it does, I'm not necessarily worried. I will take it back to trial. Um, we have a commitment and have had a commitment, and the family has supported that commitment. And sometimes that family, as remarkable as they are, have even more so supported us, uh, us being the uh, detectives and, and the uh, prosecutors involved with the case. If it were overturned, there's no doubt in my mind we'd move forward with a second trial. Um, and I guess it would depend on what issues the appellates uh, make decisions upon that we would, um, I guess, curtail the, the method in, uh, in which we, we prosecute the next case. So I mean, I'm, I'm just not worried about it. if they overturn it. I'm more than happy to take another two months out of my life and retry this case. We owe that to Tina.